Okay, it is April the 19th, 2020, and I want to thank you guys so much for sending me these links and these ideas and all the stuff about degassing. I've learned something from it, and a particularly uh, one of the methods, I, I don't remember the website, but you'll understand it in a minute because I'll, I'll just post it in the uh, comments uh, from the video before this one, and I'll post it again uh, in my description of this video. But it's about how you uh, strap the grid and the screen together and then connect them to the plate. That's what I've got right here. This is a good tube. Uh, I've got another good tube. I've already tested a third good tube. It's in the radio. This is the bad tube. See right there? It says bad. I'll put that on there. It sure can be erased if necessary. But anyway, I want to show you what happens. And then at the very end of this, I'll post one just for your entertainment about a method that I was using that was absolutely terrifying. Okay. In a nutshell, what you're doing is strapping this thing as a diode. You're putting the grid and the screen and the plate all together, so it's got a plate and it's got a cathode, so it's a diode. And then you put a varying voltage across it. And in this case, I'm just simply using a variac. I don't even have a transformer between it. Right here's the leads from the variac. I'm putting it into a bridge. This is a four conductor bridge, AC in and plus and minus out. And then you hook the plus to the plate, except it's going through this meter so we can measure the current. And then this meter up here is what we're measuring the voltage with. Now I noticed that uh, I think this, um, whoops, trying to get some of the glare off. No, 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 I want it the other way around. I want to, uh, hopefully if I can turn this one, I'll get some of that glare off those meters. But you can actually read the meters better. But you still got to see everything on the workbench really good. I think you can. <laughs> Let's do it like that. Okay, very simple setup. <clears throat> we're putting a varying voltage that we're adjusting with a variac straight across the tube. The only thing that's limiting the current is basically the impedance of the tube. Now let me show you what happens to a good tube. We have to know what happens to a good tube first. Let's light it up. You can see it light up there. And um, what the website says is for a 4400 with about 44 volts across it, you should get about 350 milliamps. And, that, and I'll show you what we get. Okay, I'm just simply going to run the voltage up. This gets kind of exciting here in a little bit. So bear with me. Um, Forty-four volts. Put it on the sixty volt scale. Crank the voltage up. There's thirty, forty, there's forty. There's forty forty-four volts. No, that's forty. That's 44 volts. Mm -hmm. And then we look down at the current meter, and it should be around 350 milliamps. And that's on the one amp scale. So there's 320 milliamps. And it's and it'll stay there steady as a rock. That's supposed to indicate that the tube isn't a complete dud. So it's kind of a cheap and dirty way to, um, to check out your 4400, 3500 Zs, 3400Zs, etc. Okay, this is cool. Now, um, I first started this with the um, with a bad tube, but I had to come back to a good tube to make sure that I understood what a good tube is supposed to look like. And what's going to happen here is, let, let me zoom back out, is I'm going to raise the voltage on the tube. I think, you, yeah, you can kind of see all of it right there. Not, not really all the detail. But anyway, I'm going to raise the voltage here all the way up to 100 volts. 
I know that's not very much compared to a cube that handle 4,000, but um, 300, 100 volts is right, right there. Put uh, the other meter on the 10 amp scale, and uh, while this obviously is stressing the uh, the cathode, because I'm the cathode is dissipating one ampere. See, there's one amp right there. Two, four, six, eight, ten. One amp. And I'm going to show you this thing is as steady as rock. It stays here forever. Now I don't know how long we could actually leave it there, but I did this to another 4-400 that I put back in the transmitter that I'll show you how it works in a minute. That's kind of an old one. Probably early 60s, if not even late 50s. And it worked. But it was a little on the soft side. Well, it's not anymore. I apparently rejuvenated the cathode by running it so hot. I'm sure the cathode in there is just screaming hot. And maybe to the point if I left it too long, maybe I can destroy it. I don't know. But anyway, I'm not going to press it too far, but I can guarantee you that it'll sit there and, and it won't ever rise. And you may say, okay, cool. So what, so what does that mean? Well, here's what it means. Let me show you. Oh, and by the way, I didn't exactly show you but when you look at the tube very carefully, you, you, you don't see anything happening in it. I don't have it turned up. Now I'll turn it back up just to show you. I'll turn it back up to uh, 100 volts. So we're just painting 100 watts in that in, in the place. So it's getting pretty hot. I mean, it's not running red yet, but let's see. It's still up at, uh, well, I, I haven't let it stay there long enough. That's not very hot, is it? Anyway, it gets pretty hot. But you don't see any blue or arcing or anything weird in there. Okay, so let's turn that thing down. Let's unplug this. We gotta let that tube cool down because it's pretty darn hot. I've done this very experiment with three good tubes. And I haven't harmed any of them. No tubes were harmed in the making of this film. <laughs> okay. I guess I ought to stop the camera and change the tube and then come right back because it needs to cool for five minutes or so. Okay, we have the new tube in there. Let's plug it in, we'll light it up. You can see the one I just pulled out over here. So in view of the camera, we'll give it a few seconds to warm up. Um, I've learned a lot out of this and I'm not sure I've learned anything. But yeah, I have, I've learned this. Yeah, I guess I've learned this for sure. Something I really believe in. I've always personally believed that all of this degassing was a bunch of baloney. I still kind of do. But if the tube was maybe just very tiny a bit gassy, maybe it would help. I don't know. But look how healthy that tube looks. That thing looks like it just came out of the factory. As a matter of fact, it might have never been used. I'm, I'm just talking while it's warming up. From my experience and from what I've read, we tend to believe what we want to when we read things, you know. Especially if they um, agree with what we think we've experienced. And that is, all of the tubes that I have are, are new, uh, excuse me, are used. The only new tubes that I remember getting absolutely new were some 4CX1000s back in about 1983. I was given three of them, still brand new in the box, never been opened. Still in a sealed plastic vacuum pack inside and I've used all three of them over the years just changing them out just for something to play with and I believe the ones that have been used are actually the ones more likely to work today after decades than the ones this one's made 1966 than the ones made in 1966 that have never been used because I think there is something to this degassing and that the plate acts as the getter and all that kind of stuff. Okay? Well, now that I've babbled long enough and this thing is warmed up enough, I'm going to run up the voltage again to the 44 volts. So let's get back up there. You'll see what I'm really doing. I'll, I'll get back with a meter here in a second. I hope it's uh, going in there okay. I'm going to run it right back up to uh, 44 volts. 
and if we look down here at the um, current meter it's a little high it's up a little, close to 400 380 390 milliamps and if we just let it sit there for a while I don't think it changes too much right there but you remember I got to turn this off you got to be able to see the numbers but you got to be able to see the tube too you really need to be able to see all this at the same time like I can by glancing around but I don't know how to make that possible I'm going to zoom out so you can sort of see what's going on at least keep your eye on the tube and the current meter I hope you can read that current meter I think you can usually you can see things better in the video than I can here in the viewfinder now I'm gonna you you uh oh <laughs> the, the voltmeter glitched there somehow I don't know maybe that was something turning on and off like an air conditioner or something okay I'm gonna run the voltage up just to 60 volts because you, you, you got to kind of watch one of them. Okay, I'm going to run the voltage up to 60. You see how the current's climbing? It's up to uh, quite a bit higher. I have to really look at it. It's up to 600 milliamps. And it's starting to climb again. It's just kind of not steady. Now, I'm my voltmeter just went to zero. I must have a loose connection. Oh shoot. Got a loose connection there. That, that, that's okay. I got it back. Now I'm going to run the voltage up to about 100 volts. I got to put this on the 10 amp scale. But watch the tube. When I get this thing up to about 100 volts. Can you see the tube? See it? Holy shit, it's going to blow up. <laughs> it doesn't work. And there's nothing I can do to make it work. The, the, the current starts to run away. The, the current will go up to 5 and 6 amps at 100 volts. 5 amps at 100 volts at 500 watts. It's trying to dissipate in that tube and it, it just craters again. I have uh, heated the plate up. I've done everything. I can't save the tube. The tube is bad. Uh, and that's that's the end of that story, really. But the good part, I think, that's come out of this story, well, is just that. If, if uh, a while ago on, on the good tubes, on this one and two others, when I run it up to 100 volts, it hovers around... What, is, what was it? I don't even remember now. I have to look at everything and write it down. It was down here on the... Uh, it was down here at about uh, five or 600 milliamps, whatever it was. But it was very steady. It didn't rise to a ridiculous level. And it never did anything like that. So, it looks like Per the, um, per the procedures in the book, or in, in this article, rather, you can do it the way they say, and you can put the 44 volts on it and get the approximately 350 milliamps of current. But that doesn't mean the tube is good. When you really start stressing the tube, if it's gassy, apparently what I have done here, and just by crazy experimenting, I may have actually discovered whether whether you can tell or not if the tube is going to crater. And see, this thing cratered at 100 volts because the current just goes, I, I guess the cathode gets hot. Something happens inside the, the little bit of gas in there ionizes and starts conducting. I think somebody called it acting like a thyrotron. I think so. So there you go. I think this can be worth something. And it's done at a low enough voltage that, you know, we're not dealing with two and three and four thousand volts that'll kill us instantly. 
So what do you think about that? Now let me, I did this to a very old tube. I gotta take the, I'm gonna turn this off. I'm through with this tube. This tube is dead. <laughs> dead forever. Okay, now let me show you here. Uh, this is a quite an old tube. This old 4400. I'm gonna flip it on here. It's one of the old veined ones with the big uh, metal veins on it. You see that? The newer ones have those little, little rolled plates, little ripples plates. This is quite an old tube. And it was a little bit soft. But let me show you now. About the maximum you can get is 600 to 650 watts. Oh my goodness, I don't have it into a dummy load. Okay, I gotta stop and put it into a dummy load. Okay, we're into a dummy load. Uh, let's put let's put some CW into it. Let's turn it on. See, there's our 3600 volts right there. Takes a little camera while it so it's not so overloaded. Doesn't show much color. Has the tiniest bit of blue in it. Yeah, hardly perceptible. But that's really not the big deal. I mean, it looks very healthy. And then when I key it, I hope I've got it tuned up right. I'll put a CW. Look at there. That's five, 575 watts. I'm not sure that that's absolutely the max. I've got to see if I can tune this thing. See, that is mighty close to 600 watts. That's all you can get out of it. That's all it's supposed to do. I don't remember what I used to get out of it. I don't remember these numbers exactly. But I think by heating up that uh, cathode, by drawing, I think it was about an amp. I think that's what I was drawing on it in the first video. Well, that was a different tube. Yeah, that was, that was this one over here. They are slightly different, but anyway, on the good tube, even at 100 volts, it'll come up to, you know, an amp or less, and then it'll just sit there. It never changes. It doesn't get any hotter. Apparently, like this one does, getting hotter and hotter and hotter until um, whatever little bit of gas in it ionizes, and then it, uh, and then it basically shorts and, and craters and blows all the fuses. So I think it's actually worth something. I think what I've learned is from what you guys sent me, I have yet to degas a tube and make it work. I've never been able to do that. I haven't tried it many times. I just plug them in 15, 30 seconds. Maybe, I get, maybe I'm really nice. On a very nice day, I'll give it five or 10 minutes to run the filaments and then I'll put the juice to it. And uh, I only absolutely believe, if I understand it always correctly, what IMAX says. There's a lot of folklore out there, you know, about this, and for some reason, once folklore about how things work get put into the lexicon of, of us ham radio operators or anybody else, it's there to stay. There's really not much we can do about it. Now, I keep using other words like, yeah, this is anecdotal. That means it worked for me, it may not work for you, and what works for you may not work for me. I get that part. But I think it's educational, and I think I may have something here. If you try it, you're trying it at your own risk. I don't know what's going to do to your tubes, but it, I haven't harmed any of my tubes yet. Um, and there you go. Thank you guys so much for watching and commenting and giving me ideas and suggestions. I've been working on this thing for hours, and uh, I'm going to add another... Uh, piece of uh, video at the end where I show how I first tried to resurrect it, degas it with this guy right here. You'll probably get a charge out of that. Stay safe, my friends. I do have to show you one more thing. Just one more. Remember that tube right there? Remember that goofy looking Amperex tube or whatever it was, that 4400? That one right there? Yeah. Made in Italy. The one that I ran up to a cathode current of one ampere, just a little bit over, 
I know some of you are going to say, I bet you damaged that tube. Well, let me show you what happened. Uh, there's nothing different. I just, here's the one that was in it, the one that I said I uh, tested the other day and did and, and made it really hot. And as you, and as you remember, <clears throat> I was running this one at one amp. Now watch what we get here. I haven't changed a thing. Still the same 3600 volts. But look at the output of this guy. See? It's over 650. It's actually stronger than the iMac. It wasn't that strong before. This is the first time I've messed with this tube in a long time. Let me make sure I've got it peaked. See, it's just a little over 650 watts. So I didn't hurt the tube. Let's see how red it runs. You can see a little bit of blue in there. Just that beautiful kind of blue. You can see it starting to turn red at the bottom. At least I can. And the camera just looks purple. How about that? I think I rejuvenated this tube too. I had to show you that so that you wouldn't worry that uh, I destroyed the tube by running the uh, cathode current so high. Now maybe if you left it that way for an hour or two, then you know. But you know how you can um, superheat uh, the thorium tungsten filaments and the boil, I suppose, some of the thorium back out to the surface. We used to do that, if you remember, in old uh, black and white CRTs. So there you go. Today is April the 18th, 2020, and this is a follow-up to trying to bring a tube back to life again. Um, I convinced myself, in the video I posted right before this one that I'm doing now, that there was no such thing as uh, degassing these tubes. But you know what? You guys have given me so much inspiration, I'm not giving up yet. This thing lights up so perfectly. I say there must not be much gas in there. And it looks like that plate's glowing. It's not. I see it right there. It looks like it's glowing. It's not. There's no high voltage on it yet. But what I have set up here is a huge power supply with the 872 rectifiers. Sorry, I've got to move around here a little bit. Oh my God. Here's what I'm going to do I've got the filaments warmed up. A procedure says to put a positive grid voltage on the tube so it can conduct at a much lower voltage. So I've put nine volts onto the grid and the screens because they're all strapped together in a zero bias uh, triode type connection. That's why you run these tetrodes as a zero bias triode, strapping the grids and the screens together. I've got a fan on it, as you can hear it running, putting a nice breeze across it. I've got the filaments warmed up. I have uh, this voltmeter right here on the 6,000 volt scale across it so we can read voltage. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six thousand. It's that second scale, that second set of numbers there. And then I've got this one on the 100 milliamp scale. I don't know if I need to put it on the thousand or not. I don't want to be touching anything. Once this thing's operating, <clears throat> I've said it. I've got it set up kind of flimsy. I realize that, and I, and that's on purpose, actually. I've got a variac across the primary area of the transformer. This is a 1800 volt half amp transformer. Serious stuff. You can see the capacitor bank over there. This is meant for the. Uh, a modulator that I haven't built yet. But anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, everything should be warmed up. This filament's on, these filaments are on. This is making me a little nervous. Is um, I've got a small variac on the input. Is I'm going to 
by watching the, the plate current here and the plate voltage there and the tube itself, I'm going to run it up to where I get the plate slightly red because I've been throwing 3600 volts onto it and it from the first time I did it it was instantaneously bad but since then after I have cooked it at least it takes a, two or three seconds so from what I've read and what you guys have told me is if you run the plate red it will degas the tube and I've actually read that in a relatively authoritative article so um, I'm not saying you guys aren't authoritative because you guys know a lot you, yeah, I learned a lot from you guys okay enough talking let's see what happens and then I'm gonna leave it this way for a while okay very slowly whoa boy the currents going straight up guess I better move that to an amp let's see okay the voltage is rising maybe I'll put that back down at 100 milliamps the voltage is rising it's only up to about um, 500 volts now 400 volts we can see the the blue in these uh, mercury vapor rectifiers I know I've got a light on it and be a lot prettier without it but uh, I've got to keep in mind that the product of this times that the voltage times the current is the amount of power that's going to be dissipated in that plate. Well, this thing is coming up. Let's just put it up at about a thousand volts. That's a thousand volts. Well, not too bad. On the 100 milliamp scale, that's uh, 40 milliamps. A thousand times 0.04 is 40 watts. Okay, so I'm not dissipating much, much in there yet. Okay, let's go on up. Hope this thing doesn't arc and scare the wits out of me. Probably will. Okay, well, I've got the plate voltage up to, uh, let's see, six, five, four, three, two thousand volts. There's two thousand volts on that thing right now, as you can see. Maybe I'm a little bit nervous too. At uh, a little bit of, uh oh. Uh oh, something something didn't work. I saw the current go real high. Let's do that again. Well, I guess I've blown a fuse. Maybe this is a bad idea. Got to reevaluate here.